In this video, I'm going to go through how the motion captured in video is affected by the frames per second set in your camera. This is the first time that my juggling skills I practiced one summer in middle school has actually come in handy. So this first shot you're going to see is a 23.976 frames per second shot at 148th shutter speed. I've maintained that rule of doubling the shutter speed or that number, the fraction, to the frame rate, which is standard practice. So 23.976 or basically 24 frames per second and 148th shutter. This is supposed to give you lifelike motion like you're seeing with your human eye. Similarly, 2997 is pretty close, a standard frame rate, and the motion captured is pretty similar. Next, we captured at 5998, a faster frame rate, and you'll be able to see that the motion isn't as blurred. The balls jumping up and down are a little crispy. Then I shot at 120 frames per second. Now this clip was sped up because my camera, when it captures 120 frames per second, it captures it at a base rate of 23,976, which actually means when I ingest it into my computer, it's slowed down. I cranked it up to 240 frames per second, which typically would be 10 times slow motion, but here I've sped it up to normal speed and you can see that it really starts to get kind of jittery there. I think looking at a comparison view is going to help us visualize what is happening. So I've maintained and kept the 23,976 frames per second shot on the left. Then we're going to go through the other ones. On the right, you see 2997, fairly similar. As we go through these, you'll start to see that the motion of the balls is crisper. On the left, you can see there is a little bit of motion blur captured with that 23,976 frame rate. The 120 frames per second and then the 240 frames per second shot that you're going to see next, super crisp because it's capturing more frames per second, meaning all of that motion of that ball is captured super crisply. Is that a word? Crispy? Crisply? Now let's go through a couple of these and look at them frame by frame because this is going to help us actually see that and visualize that motion blur. So here we have on the left 23,976 again and 2997 on the right. You can see that there's motion blur in both shots, but the blur is a little bit more exaggerated on the left. And this is natural. If you wave your hand in front of your eye, you see not motion blur. Your eye doesn't capture your hand crispy, crisply as it moves past your, your eye. Your brain just can't catch up to it. And so it's natural to have motion blur. And that's why shooting at that 24 frames per second or even at the 30 or the 2997 is a fairly naturally looking frame to shoot at. If we go to 5998, which is another popular frame rate that a lot of people use for shooting action sports, if a lot of television companies are actually shooting sports at this frame rate to make that motion crisp. And so while there is a little bit of motion blur when the balls are going as fa the fastest when they're rising up or in the middle of their fall, it's not like the motion blur on the left. Now when we go to 120 frames per second, there's barely any motion blur. You can see on the right side, barely any motion blur. You can almost read that text on the balls as they're flying up. And then same with the 240, even less. And you can see as I go frame by frame, just everything super crispy. Now let's do another comparison. What I'm going to do is match the frame rates so everything is playing back at the 23,976 frame rate, which means all of the footage is going to actually be slowed down except for the 23,976 footage that you see on the left. And on the right, you can see 2997 isn't much. 5998, you start to get that sort of smooth, buttery, slow motion, pretty nice. And because we're shooting more frames per second, you're able to slow that down without it being completely blurred. Now, this is where 120 frames per second and 240 really kills it, where you can slow down footage, get that super slow motion video, 
with mo action or anything moving, that's why we are shooting at those high frame rates. Let's just look at another comparison with three shots on the screen at once so you can have a good idea of what these look like. 23.976 on the left, 59.98 in the middle, 120 frames per second on the right. And this is all at normal speed, but you can tell that the crispiness of that video on the right looks too jittery. And that might be a style you want to go for, but I don't think it looks good at full speed. Now let's slow it down with the same side by side. So here you can see the motion. Everything's playing back at 23,976. And you can see the comparison of how slow the motion is when shooting at 5998 or 120. And 120 is about five times slow normal speed. So five, one second is actually playing back at five seconds. So just to hit the nail on the head a little bit more, here is the 23976 footage slowed down 50%, so two times. And whereas the 5998 FPS footage looks great slowed down two times, or about two times, this can't be done unless you're going for this stuttery motion look. Let's do this even further and compare it to five times. So this is five times slow. So one second is taking five seconds on my timeline. And this is why we shoot at 120 frames per second, if you can, because you typically don't want your slow motion to look like this. Let's just go extreme. Here is the 10 times slow motion. It is spreading out those frames, which the shot just doesn't have. And that's why each, shot, each literal frame is being slowed down and you can see each frame one at a time. Whereas if we were watching that 240 frames per second footage, whereas if we were watching our 240 frames per second footage slowed down, this is what it looks like. All right, I hope this video ho helps you understand what frame rates are, how they affect the motion that you're capturing in your videos, and also a little bit more about playing back your video at different frame rates, setting that master frame rate on your timeline and adjusting your footage to match that. And this is done differently depending on your editing program. In Premiere Pro, you have to interpret the footage at a different frame rate. You can also slow it down with the speed adjustment. Look it up, there's tutorials out there on YouTube. I've probably put out one as well on slowing down footage. Uh, in Premiere and other applications, but I hope this video helps you out. Cheers.